Welcome back. I'm That Chemist, and today we're going to talk about the chemistry of spices. So if you enjoy spices, make sure you watch to the end, because a lot of these spices have similar structures, which is somewhat interesting. So in general, when we think about using spices, we don't think about their chemical structure most of the time. Maybe you think about cinnamon and cinnamaldehyde, maybe you think about cloves and eugenol, but a lot of the time when we're working with spices in our cooking, we don't typically think about their structure. And so most of the time when we have a spice, the flavor doesn't just come from one aromatic or volatile component of the spice. It comes from a mixture of several of them. And so today I'm going to talk about the main, the major constituents of several different spices which happen to contain the allyl benzene motif. If you're interested in this type of video, in the future I can do more covering different groups such as aldehydes or related structures such as those seen in coumarin. Okay. So whether or not the stuff we talk about today is commonly used in your cuisine will kind of depend on what your local diet and your local traditions are like for spices in dishes. However, it's interesting to note that despite the structural similarity, a lot of these have quite unique and distinct smells. So if you want me to do more videos like this, please do leave a comment down below. So let's start with cloves. Cloves is probably the most typical compound that has an owl benzene that you'll think of when we are thinking of this class of compounds. Most people have smelled cloves quite often in undergraduate laboratories. The purification of eugenol is done through a steam distillation. And there's a really great book that talks about the historical significance of cloves, and it's called Napoleon's Buttons. And if you're interested in reading it, I'll put a link down to it below. And so the main constituent of clove oil is eugenol, and it makes up about 77% of the entirety of the volatile components of the essential oils. And so an essential oil, if you've never heard that phrase before, or if you've heard it, but you're not sure what it is, they basically take uh, all of the organics from the cloves and they just distill it. And so all of the organic components that come over are considered the essential oil. Okay, so sometimes if they do a steam distillation, they separate out the water, but what remains would be the essential oil of the clove. And so there are many other plants that produce small amounts of eugenol, but the purest form of eugenol can be found in cloves. So if you want to know what eugenol smells like, have a smell of cloves. Yes, there will be other compounds contributing to the, the aroma, but the majority of the aroma is coming from the eugenol. Okay, so when I smell eugenol, I would describe it as sweet, but phenolic, and I actually, I actually dislike the smell of eugenol. It's kind of too strong for me. If we're talking about sassafras, you may or may not have heard of sassafras before. It was traditionally the flavor that was used to flavor sarsaparilla. Um, it's got like a root beer flavor. Um, a good friend of mine actually produced sackmead using uh, sarsaparilla, uh, or sassafras rather, and it had quite a unique flavor that was actually quite pleasant. But most of the time, if you try to buy a product containing it, uh, such as sarsaparilla, they'll have alternative flavors instead now. So sassafras is typically only used when uh, you're producing your own drinks or certain countries still allow it to be used. And so the main constituent of sassafras oil is saffron, and this makes up 85% of the oil. And if you're curious about the link to where all of these uh, values are from, you can see this here. There's also a really good book on the chemistry of spices that has a lot of errors in it. Um, I'll include a link to it in the description, but it's still a good starting place to get ideas of what's in most common spices. And so sassafras bark has a cool root beer smell when you smell it, but it does have kind of like a twang of a chemical odor. So I haven't smelled the pure isolated compound. I've only ever smelled the bark that I got a piece of from my friend. So it's generally not included anymore because there's concerns that um, this motif is carcinogenic, uh, the saffron motif. Um, although as most of these have similar structures, you might be concerned that a lot of the flavors could also have potential carcinogenicity. But what I've kind of come to terms with is almost every flavor is going to have some risks associated with it, but you're not going to get any flavor in your life if you're just worried about those risks. So you can decide whether or not you want to put spices in your food, but I personally do. So the next compound is anise and phenyl. And so the main constituent of these is anethyl, which kind of sounds like I have a lisp, but this is how it's pronounced, anethyl. So here you can see a bulb of phenyl, here you can see a star anise, and here you can see anise seed. Anise seed and star anise have quite similar profiles in terms of what the essential oil uh, contains. And in the case of all of these, the relative amount of anethyl is about 90%, so it's quite high. Um, in the case of phenyl, it's only about 85%. So to me, these have more of a licorice smell, but it's been quite a while since I've smelled it. Um, but nonetheless, it's uh, interesting that they have this motif. Now, in this case, you can see that instead of having the allylic group with a CH2 connected to the benzene, in this case, the CH3 is at the terminus. And so this is 
a styrene derivative. Now, another spice is tarragon. And interestingly, tarragon has a major component of estragol. Estragol kind of looks like the um, eugenol seen earlier, but it's missing an oxygen, um, and nonetheless has a unique flavor. Um, I have not actually smelled tarragon, but if you like the smell of tarragon, comment down below. If you're curious what these little comments underneath the compound name means, there's some other spices which contain small amounts of these, and so if you're curious what those are, you can see them listed here. Now, the next compound that I wanted to talk about is apiol and mitricin, uh, or myristricin, and these are both abundant in parsley. And so these have been used historically. The apioles particularly were used uh, in like medieval times as uh, chemical to cause abortions when an undesired pregnancy had occurred. Now, I'm not advocating for or against the use of these. Um, however, I think the amount of parsley that you'd need to use to get a significant amount of this chemical might be unpractical for most purposes. Um, although it's interesting to note that these two analogs, which look really similar, are derived from the same plant. Um, so it's curious how they the biosynthesis of these might occur. If you are an expert in the biosynthesis of these compounds and you think it would be interesting to discuss, I'd encourage you to bring them up in the Discord. Now, the next uh, spice is black caraway. And so you can see these are black caraway seeds and a couple interesting compounds that black caraway has include nothoapiol as well as dilapiol. Now these are really electron rich benzene rings. It's pretty incredible that the plant is able to make these and still retain the aromaticity of the ring without further oxidizing it to just some decomposed mess. But nonetheless, you can see that the benzodioxal motif is quite common in these as well as the addition of methoxy groups. Um, more often than not, you'll have a phenol or uh, an anisole derivative uh, of these compounds, which is kind of interesting. It's interesting to see how uh, different plants have evolved to make different compounds that have similar structure, uh, but different properties. So even though this one's called dill apiol, um, dill itself doesn't have too, too much of this. There's a lot of other volatile components of the essential oil of dill. But in the case of black caraway, there's still a considerable amount, as you can see, 45%. Um, I, I just noticed here that I didn't include the link to where I got these numbers, and I'll include that in the description. So a couple of final examples. Uh, these ones you might debate whether or not they're spices. The chemical profile of these has been assessed in the literature, and so you can see that the major component of the volatile oil derived from this plant is 85% Acericin. Acericin is similar. Again, you can see that we have the benzodioxal and a methoxy group, although an allyl group is still there. Now, in the final example, we have this uh, interesting root. Now, depending on the specific part of the plant that was harvested, different amounts of these chemicals were observed. Um, you can see that the top one here, gamma acerone, which has the uh, interesting um, allylic group connected with a CH2, is also present in sweet flag as well as Canadian snake root. Now, despite myself being a Canadian, I am actually not familiar with the snake root and it might be used in um, indigenous medicine. I'm uncertain of that, however. In the other, the other major compound is um, E-azerone, where you can see instead we have the styrene derivative, which is kind of similar to the anethyl we saw earlier. So you can see that the gamma azerone is present in 26% abundance, while the, the E isomer of azerone is abundant in 11%. So it's kind of interesting. So hopefully uh, you've enjoyed all these. There's a couple other interesting owl benzene derivatives that are naturally occurring, although they're typically present in small amounts. This interesting one, this allyl tetramethoxybenzene, is one of the few examples where you see four methoxy groups but no benzodioxyl. There's lots of methoxies but no benzodioxyl. Usually once these systems get further and further electron-rich, for whatever reason, the plants start making the benzodioxyl motif. Um, you could imagine potentially some sort of oxocarbenium is generated and then a phenol is able to undergo nucleophilic attack on that position. Uh, but nonetheless, this minor constituent of benzene uh, or minor constituent of parsley contains four methoxy groups, which is quite cool. Here you can see another interesting uh, compound where we don't have the typical substitution pattern, but rather we have the 135 substitution, which is kind of cool. And another one that's kind of interesting is elamycin. It would be interesting to see in the future if we start developing new spices based on these resolved structures of spices. You could imagine that if you put like a sulfur in there or if you put like a halogen or a methyl group, you might have an interesting smelling compound that could be quite pleasant for spices. Additionally, if the toxicity of these can be pinned down to a certain functional group, you could imagine that we could avoid that functional group and create other derivatives for spices that might have similar flavors without having the undesirable toxicity of the naturally occurring compound. If you think something like this would be cool, uh, you should comment down below and maybe we can have a conversation in the Discord. 
So hopefully this has been an interesting video about allylbenzene motifs in spices. It would really help out this channel if you left a like and subscribed, and I hope you have a great day.